Hello, Mr. Andre. How are you today? Hello, hello. Very good, my friend. How are you doing? Good. I know that you already told the, the creator story about 5,000 times, including in the Zolix. <laughs> but uh, we do have uh, some uh, clients that uh, want to know what you did with the uh, Zo Creator and the vendor management system. Uh, also, Zo liked the idea, so they put you on the Zolix to be a guest speaker. So do you have uh, power to do it one last time? Of course, always my pleasure. Again, it's a, it was a hard process of kind of everything we create together. So uh, after we finish it, it's always a pleasure speaking about it and kind of giving people example how much powerful the tool of creator is. It's powerful for sure. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. Uh, why did you need a solution that uh, was created on Zo Creator? Why not having it on Zo CRM? So the solution that we needed was a combination of some of the existing software we use from managing the, the contractors we're working, managing the vendors, also some of the facilities. Uh, and it was two different versions that didn't match with what the platform in the CRM was offering. So that is the one piece of the pie pretty much when we integrate implemented Zoho that was not, didn't have a solution for it. So... We pretty much sat down, did an architecture, and built it from scratch. And this architecture was actually relatively easy relatively to the CRM and the other components was, that we architected before. It was painless, to be honest. Uh, the other one, I think because of all the experience from the other implementation we did, I think it was painless also from our side, but also from the developer team, because we're now already speaking the same languages, same language when it comes to developing. So even now we have a lot of other product we're working in the progress. It's a, it's not even a, even a meeting. It's kind of more as a, a recap quickly. And we're going to a project very fast because we exactly know how we want it. We know what is Zoe is capable of doing, what is the functionality. So it's very mainstream. Okay. So in terms of the, the, the application itself, the application starting with you closing a job. So let's say you have a project and for people that don't know what you're doing, uh, you're dealing with a big project, uh, uh, government, municipals, uh, big, uh, big clientele with uh, uh, lots of needs. Whenever you're closing this job and from time to time you need to have third party vendors working with you, how it goes from there? How a close one job initiating the vendor selection process in the creator? So it's actually starting even before that. So the VSM is a vendor management system. It's already kind of e integrated into our sales process. So mm -hmm. let's say, for example, I have a job that is in the North Pole. I don't have a technicians in the North Pole and I, I need to use some of the contractors over there. I got a tender from a customer that has a specific scope of work that need to be done. I take that scope of work and I actually creating a bidding process on the v VMS system. And then each one of my contractors is able to send me kind of what is their pricing. We kind of awarding who is going to be the pricing that we're going to carry. And then we're going to send it to in the sales process in the CRM. Second, the job is approved. Then the job is approved and we finish all the documentation. Then we have a PO system that is starting from the CRM of as, uh, opening a, a what we call it start as a request. And from there, it's actually creating uh, projects. Now, it's also combining to a project that we manage internally in projects, Zoho projects as well. So my team sees Zoho projects. The vendor I work with them, he sees uh, the VMS creator. system. Yeah, the creator system. They have, their, they have their own login and they can uh, They have check a full the... portal, full portal with dashboards and everything. Now, we created a lot of rules in the system that kind of manage the contractors for us. For example, every information they need to give us. So for example, let's say we have a contractor in the North Pole that we know is great, but his insurance is not up to date. We're not even able to reach out to him and he's going to get alerts all the time to update it because technically he's invalid in our system to use him because his insurance is not up to date. So it's kind of running anywhere between our HR to a customer service, to accounting payable, to account receivable, all the features that working with contractors is managed by that system and we create a lot of automation. So before I had two people dedicated just to working with the contractors, 
now I have someone doing it part time because the system does it, everything automatically. So if the contractors is not responsible of filling his information, it's not going to be valid to get new more work. If a contractor is, doesn't send all the documents he need to close the job, the system cannot approve his PO to send it to payable. Like all, we took a lot of the steps that we had, but we had that knowledge doing it again from years using other systems. But in the process of implementation of CRM, I learned personally a lot of kind of how to build processes in a very specific way that right now every flow that I create, it's it's very easy and it's saving us out of time because the second I will speak with my team about specific flow of work that we want to do, my head is already translated how it's going to work in Zoho. And then it's it's have to work. We don't do anything is outside of Zoho and it's have to be automated. So pretty much it's helping us to lower our liability level to really low. Believer, or I think we are we lower it at least by fifty percent. Vendors that, that are bidding, they will have mm. the right insurance, the right certifications, so everything will be already checked by the system. Yep. And that means that you are, you know, uh, not hiring someone that you're not supposed to. And also, yep. when they are finishing a job, they will have a specific form that they need to fill that is relevant exactly. to, to the to the area of expertise that they dealt with let's say windows or low voltage or gates. And based on that, they need to take pictures, they need to fill forms and that's uploaded to the system together with their final invoice, right? Yes, exactly. So, but let's say for example, they receive a purchase order to do that job for us for hundred dollars. And when they send us the invoice, they send us an invoice for 101. The system automatically is going to reject it and it's going to send it to an account manager to check it. If they upload all the right information. Everything is there. The project manager that was managing that project didn't had any note on the system that is holding it from kind of going into the flow. You send a hundred bucks, your PO is matching a hundred bucks, boom, going to payable. A person will get paid under, under 30 days. If he's saying it to 101, now it's going to a much longer process. So the system is already funneling everything properly. So there won't be any mistakes or anything. So a lot of stuff that is common and ongoing, it's it's going very, very fast. So that's preventing vendors to charge you twice or three times for the same job, which is very common mm -hmm. for, you know, in, in this industry. It's very common in this industry, but the issue would happen, let's say a vendor will send me an invoice or send it to my account receivable. Somehow we're going to go into our flow because it was sent to a person. Now, the second you added an invoice, and technically, the invoice they upload is not, it's it's only an attachment. They actually have to fill up the amount. The amount has to be a, a equal to the to the number on the attachment. So they, they cannot add another invoice after that. It's done. Yeah. They, because if so, they want to put a, a request for a change order. That has to approve by a PM. And then it can be done. But it's kind of, it's not even, a, it's not a trash wall. It's a wall. It's a glass ceiling. It can't go over it, period. So yeah. it's what is creating us that our revenue are protected. And we have no place for mistakes because we're not also working anymore with estimates that coming from the vendors in their own wording. The estimates we're actually getting, it's in our scope of work and they're just filling up the fill of the amount. They can put their estimate as an attachment, but the contract, everything is going in our wording, what is protecting us legally, that all the flow is done properly. So again, no places for stuff to fall between the cracks. It's the way I design it, it's a hallway with no doors. There's one door in the front, one door in the back. That's it. But it sounds to me also that uh, in this way, if everybody's filling the same fields, you can compare apple to apples, which everything is flowing the same way. It's just now the price is the difference. Yeah, because this is what's going to happen next year. So I'm waiting now for creating more data. And then we're going to create some analytics to actually compare, to, to actually give us information and say, hey, the pricing is too high, the pricing is too low. So we're waiting for one year to pass. So we have all the data of the year and then we start comparing everything year to date. And uh, thank you very much for repeating the same story for mm. 5,001 times. I think it's a great system for sure on uh, on the creator ecosystem. And this is why everybody wants to hear it again and again. So right. thank you. Thank My you pleasure. Thank you very much. Have a good day.